Okay, in the next two videos, we're going to look at the early history of atomic theory through the discovery of the nucleus by Rutherford. We want to basically start here with the very beginning of the theory, and then we're going to trace that theory all the way up through um, Rutherford, and then we'll pick up the theory again in the spring semester, talking about the electrons and where the electrons are found in the atom. The original theory of the atom comes from a Greek philosopher by the name of Democritus. Democritus was from around 400 BC in Greece. He's the first one that came up with the idea that matter could be subdivided until you reach some tiniest piece. And that tiniest piece was eventually called the atom. So Democritus originally comes up with the idea that matter could be broken down into some tiniest piece of matter known as the atom. It wasn't until significantly later in 1808 that John Dalton started to give us a description of how the atom worked. Dalton's atomic theory was made up of a number of different parts, four main parts here. First, elements are made up of some sort of tiny particle. Second, all atoms of a given element are identical. So if you have an atom of hydrogen, he said it was identical to every other atom of hydrogen. Third, atoms of one element are different from atoms of another different element. So hydrogen atoms and nitrogen atoms are different from one another. Fourth, atoms of one element can combine with atoms of a different element to form compounds. This is known as the law of constant composition, that the ratio of the elements in a compound is always going to be the same. So if you have one compound, the ratio of the elements within that compound will always be the same. And last, and this was what makes Dalton's atomic theory unique, is that he said atoms are indivisible. So many parts of this atomic theory carry forward throughout the history of the development, but especially the law of composi constant composition, but the fact that atoms are indivisible is eventually the part that causes Dalton's atomic theory to be dropped and us to come onto a new theory. Just to think about this law of constant composition, here we have three different compounds containing nitrogen and oxygen, NO, NO2, and N2O. For example, N2O is what you know of as nitrous oxide. This is actually the compound that's known as laughing gas, which you might get at your dentist's office or in some types of surgery. NO2 is a slightly toxic gas that is sometimes used in an industrial process, and nitrogen monoxide, NO, also used in an industrial process. You would not want to confuse NO2 and N2O. N2O, laughing gas that's used at the dentist, NO2, something that's toxic. So you want to make sure that you do not confuse those two, and you can see that the ratio of nitrogen to oxygen in these compounds is different and every NO2 molecule would always have a ratio of one nitrogen to two oxygens. Every N2O would always have a ratio of two nitrogens to one oxygen, and so on. This theory from 1808 sticks around until about 1897 with the work of J.J. Uh, Thompson. J.J. Thompson in England a, is doing a number of experiments with something called a cathode ray tube. Cathode ray tube is similar to the tube that originally made up TVs. Um, if you think of TVs that were the big boxy TVs, not the flat screens you're used to now, they were made up of cathode ray tubes. And he was studying a cat, the original idea of the cathode ray tube. When he studied these cathode ray tubes, you see a little beam of light that it looks like a beam of light um, coming through the tube. He did two different experiments, and you need to understand that these are actually two separate experiments. One, he put the beam up to a magnet, and by having a magnet next to that beam, it deflected, and he was able to see that the beam was made up of some type of matter. He was able to then look at the ratio of the charge to the mass and find that this mass was incredibly small, smaller than the mass of an individual atom. He also showed that this was negatively charged by using electrical plates. So he had a particle that was smaller than an atom and was negatively charged. We later call this particle the electron. Now this causes a problem for Dalton's atomic theory. Dalton's atomic theory was that the atom was indivisible. But now we have J.J. Thompson showing that there is a particle smaller than the atom. So we need a new theory of the atom. This new theory comes from a scientist by the name of William Thompson. Before we get into that, 
Let's look at a couple of things. First, since we know that the atoms must be neutral, J.J. Thompson was able to also summarize that there must be a positive particle in the atom, and that positive particle is known as the proton. And if we look at the cathode ray tube, it looks something like this. You see metal plates on the end, a tube that's filled with gas, and you see a stream of particles. It usually ends up this green color when you actually see it connected to an electrical source. He was able to place a magnet around this and bend the stream and also electrical plates to show that it was matter and that it was negatively charged. And you'll actually, there will be a video embedded in the blog from Discovery Channel where you can actually see this experiment. So after J.J. Thompson comes up with the idea that there must be a smaller particle known as the electron, we need a new model of the atom. And that new model of the atom comes from William Thompson, otherwise known as Lord Kelvin. Now the fact that they both are last name Thompson has caused a lot of confusion in chemistry. If you actually look on the internet, most people will, a lot of the sites you'll find, and most of the written sites will attribute the plum pudding model to J.J. Thompson. But it was actually developed by William Thompson, otherwise known as Lord Kelvin. He says in 1903 that since we have these smaller particles, that the bulk of the atom is made up of positive charge with the negative particles embedded inside. This is known as the plum pudding model. At the time, plum pudding was something that everyone would understand in England. Plum pudding is a type of bread pudding with plums or other types of fruit embedded inside. So they would think of the fruit as the electrons and the bread pudding as the um, positive charged area. Now this is a model that you may not understand as well because you've probably never had plum pudding. So it's sometimes easier to think of this model as the chocolate chip cookie model of the atom, with the cookie being the positive charge and the electrons being the um, chocolate chips embedded inside. So we developed this theory starting with Democritus telling us that we have an atom, then Dalton saying that atoms were indivisible spheres, giving us the law of constant composition, followed by J.J. Thompson doing the cathode ray tube experiment, which shows that we have a smaller particle known as the electron and gives us the idea that there are protons and electrons. And then with William Thompson describing that with the plum pudding model. In the next video, we'll look at Ernest Rutherford and how he shows an experiment that shows this plum pudding model can't be correct and takes us to the next step. After you're done with this video, please watch the embedded video from Discovery on J.J. Thompson and the cathode ray tube experiment.